Right now we got uh, four of the first four injectors loaded up here. Hopefully they won't leak. And uh, well, let's try this idle test here. Whoa! Afternoon garage. So last week we did uh, complete head studs on this thing, replaced all 24 of them. Boy, that was an incredible nightmare, and now I'm kind of back where I started from uh, to where I can pretty much assemble the thing quickly and I'll get it back up in the car. So I have some injector cleaning going on here, and of course you can see that all these parts are painted and plated, and I've got um, you know the shrouds, they're all cleaned up. I got new rubber hoses wherever there is a rubber hose, being the fuel lines and uh, the Carrera uh, cam tensioner lines are all kind of rubber, so I'm replacing those and really don't want to get back in there and do anything again. So I'm going to try to get this in the car as quickly as possible and uh, you know make up some of that time I lost with the head studs. Let's go to the bench, check out those injectors, rebuild those, and uh, well, try throwing it together. All right, time to do something with these nasty injectors. Um, you know the engine didn't run very well, so I don't expect these things to flow out very well. But anyway, what I did was I uh, refurbished the fuel injector rails here, and I'm going to use a tester like this. Uh, I think what I want to do first, just as usual, what I would usually do would be to put this in there and get a baseline to see, you know, how how each one of them uh, sprayed, and we'll kind of mix and match them. Look at the compare to the flow rates between each one of them, and also we'll look at the spray pattern. And then there's an ultrasonic cleaner back here, which actually had the heater on. I hope the thing's not going to burn up on me. But, uh, boy, that's hot. Anyway, we're going to use Berryman's cleaner in there, and uh, you kind of, you know, you just uh, plug your injectors in. It kind of cycles the injectors, gets things going a little bit. And then um, for to test the injectors, you're using mineral spirits in here. This is kind of cool. It's the first time I've used something like this, but, you know, I have some leaky injectors on one of my other cars, so I figured I'd buy one, and... Well, they're great for electronic in injection, but not for CIS systems, you know, that uh, rely on pressure to spray. But, yeah, it's be interesting to try it out. I guess the internal pump will uh, be enough for, well, six a six-cylinder, so should be good enough to fill the volume in the, in the cylinders here. And it's all filled up. Let's try it out see how it works. All right, now we got uh, four of the first four injectors loaded up here. Hopefully they won't leak. And, uh, well, let's try this idle test here. Whoa! Yeah, that leaked all over the place. So, yeah, I guess I'll have to, uh, work on tightening this up and... One hour later. All right, I kind of got this figured out. Uh, boy, you have to make sure these O-rings are all centered in there, but it wasn't any big deal. So right now I'm going to uh, turn on the pump. So let's start filling up these cylinders, and I guess uh, we'll just idle speed for now, and we'll kind of measure the volume. Okay, you can see this one here isn't working at all. Um, yeah, this is about 50 pounds of fuel pressure. So I'm gonna pause this for a second. And, uh, well, you can see this one's flowing a lot more than, or this one's not flowing as much as these other ones. So I think we'll just kind of swap this around. Show what we're doing on a bad cable there. Yeah, so this injector is completely dead. So there was, a, there was a dead cylinder on that engine. And that thing's not working at all. These are all wired together. So I'll just replace these two here, and uh, this is five and six, and we'll compare it to this one. So the cool thing about it is you can drain everything back into the test tank right there. We'll be ready for another test. So yeah, this is a pretty cool machine. It's working like it should. Yeah, you can see these are all working. That's pretty good. So we'll let it run for a minute here. Boy, all these just look terrible. Kind of hard to see, but none of them are spraying that well.
And we'll test that one more time. Yeah, that one is indeed dead. I think what I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean them all up, take the O-rings off, clean them all up, and I put this in the ultrasonic tank to see if I can't get it working again. Uh, that's not good. set up in here. Got the injectors laying on there like that. So, uh, turn the heater here. And, uh, that's the ultrasonic. 20 minutes later. You have to be careful with this. Look, it's starting to smoke, actually. It's starting to vaporize all that. It's hotter than hell, too. All right, I'm gonna turn this off. All of this fluid out. All right, it's been about a week or so and I got the new injector and I put them side by side and I was kind of looking at them and well, um, <laughs> the body's in a, different, in a different place so you can't clamp it down on here. I could measure the individual um, you know, flow rate and compare it to one of these, to the individual flow rate of another. But instead what I did was, uh, well, I popped out the screen and then gave the injector a good cleaning. You can see here, I'm sucking that hot B12 through it and then spraying it right back through without a filter in it. This ought to clean it up. Okay, so now I got the whole thing uh, kind of assembled again. You can see it kind of stripped the paint off of this one injector. So this was number one that didn't work at all. So we'll start out with a medium spray volume test. So I think what I'll do is I'll throw some more paint on this injector and uh, I'll start assembling that rail. Here it comes, here's the moment I've been waiting for at least. Uh, I'm gonna do the same thing I did last time, build some oil pressure, make sure that that's working first, and then, well, plug in the coil and fire the motor. So right now I have the fuel pump relay disconnected, shouldn't be pumping any fuel in there, and also the uh, hot leads off the coil, so shouldn't really be starting, but, well, let's see what kind of oil pressure we got. Alright, 
so I got oil pressure. Kind of heard a lumpiness in there too. I'm not sure, quite sure why that is, but well, let's try to start it up. So I suspect I'm not getting any spark. So I'm going to run the starter. Hopefully this thing doesn't freaking fall off. I need you to tell me if there's spark jumping across that gap. Don't get your hand Where? in there too much. Where? What gap? Huh? Spark plug. The, oh, right here. Yeah. Um, I should see a spark. Yeah. Because I can't be back there and do, I have to film it and then that. run it back, right? I've done that before. But... Okay, ready? Yeah. I see the sparky. All right, I took some time to look at this and I think I got a little bit closer. Found out the distributor cap wasn't seated quite correctly, and I wasn't receiving signals from the alarm module, which I think was probably keeping the whole thing up when it wouldn't shut off. So, uh, gonna have to go in there and kind of delete that. But I got the correct signals to the ECU in there, and I'm gonna upgrade the cylinder head temp sensor from a one wire to a two wire here. It's supposed to be more reliable. This thing actually just kind of opened up on me. Not sure why. Well, I got tired of messing around with this and uh, decided to dump the fuel like I did on the last one, but look how dark that is. It's been in there likely quite a while and uh, well, it looks like coffee. Just not so tasty. Well, looks like I got spark now, so well, let's give it a try. I did some of the body work here, but I'm gonna to have to put a paint job on it and well, I can't do it here in the afternoon garage. So that'll come later and well, next week we'll be working on a completely different car. So if you got something out of this, give me a like and subscribe if you haven't. You can use every subscriber I can get. Thanks for watching.